The soldier dressed as a man peeled off her chest. Luckily, the chest wrap blocked the darts and saved her life. The woman removes the darts and learns what her true mission is. But the Mulan she is now is nothing like the one who fought bravely against the enemy on the battlefield. She had become a shy young lady. Mulan's waist was wrapped in a long fabric and pulled tight. She tied her lapel and embroidered her shoes. Her head was tied in a double ponytail. Then she used a pen to apply foundation evenly on her face. Then she paints her eyebrows with green paint. On the forehead, she painted the flower inlay. The colorful Mulan's face looks completely different from the one on the battlefield. But today was a very important day for Mulan. This is her first blind date, so she couldn't let her family lose face. You might think that Mulan is now cooking tea and pouring water in an orderly manner. But since she was a little girl, she has been a child who does not let people worry about her. To her, climbing up the roof and catching chickens was just a routine. While the matchmaker kept telling Mulan to behave herself, a spider landed on the table at an inopportune moment. Mulan quietly used a teapot to hold the spider down in order to calm her sister. But this action also attracted the attention of the matchmaker. Obviously she's going to have a nagging feat. Mulan and her sister look at each other and know that a big mess is about to happen. As soon as she moved the teapot away, her sister screamed. The room was in chaos. Tables and chairs toppled over. Mulan immediately pulled off her hairband to protect the teapot from flying into the air and caught the teapots one by one. She even managed to catch the tea sets with her feet, but the hair on top of her forehead became unbound and blocked Mulan's view. She was no longer able to get her weight right. After Mulan's swing, nothing in her hands escaped be smashed to pieces. Father knew the mashmaker didn't like Mulan when he saw her come out of the room with her hair in her hand. What's worse is that, the matchmaker also said in front of everyone that the Mulan family had failed to raise a good daughter. Mulan's family instantly became a joke in the eyes of everyone. But here comes something even worse. The border was in danger and the emperor issued an imperial decree to recruit a large number of soldiers. Every family must have at least one male soldier, but Mulan's family only had two daughters. Naturally, the task of joining the army fell to the elderly father. He limped up to receive the decree. Mulan was heartbroken and knew that if her father went to war, he would never return. Mulan put on her armor in the middle of the night and left a letter for the sake of her father and her family's life and honor. She took her father's sword and decided to take his place in the army. The next day, when her father woke up and saw what Mulan had left behind, he knew everything. He couldn't reveal that Mulan was a woman or he would get her killed. As a father, the only thing he can do is kneel in front of the shrine and pray for Mulan. And Mulan had traveled for days and nights and still hadn't found the location of the barracks. It was clear that she was lost in the Gobi. By the time she woke up the next day, perhaps her father's prayers helped. A phoenix suddenly appeared in the sky, guided by the phoenix. Mulan managed to find the barracks. People from all over the country were gathered here. It was a strange and savage tribe for Mulan and overwhelmed her. Mulan panicked more about life in the barracks than she did about going to war. She fears that her identity as a woman will be revealed and she will bring shame to her family. Mulan's high level of martial arts talent allows her to easily handle the training in the barracks with swords and spears and horseback riding and archery. But she is at a loss for words when she sees the naked Men in the tent, Mulan volunteered to go on night watch to avoid the bath. She let the pouring rain fall on her body. Mulan waited until everyone was asleep before quietly taking off her corset and carefully lay down on the bed to rest. She was afraid of waking up the people next to her. Mulan is the first one to wake up every day. She put on her equipment with fear and trepidation. After a period of adjustment, Mulan disguised her identity well. No one could tell she was a woman. She was also able to talk to her campmates. This day they took out a sketch of a woman and started talking about it. This made Mulan, who was sitting on the sidelines, a little embarrassed. But she was occasionally asked what her future wife would look like. But Mulan's answer made everyone laugh because she was clearly describing a man. She didn't argue with that either. On this day, the barracks was having a one-on-one -on -one fight. Mulan was motivated by her opponent's desire to win. Mulan used his weapon to give the group a cartwheel to kick back the javelin. Under the opponent's repeated fierce attacks, thus, the javelin was thrust straight into the ground. Her strength attracted the general, but Mulan always remembered her father's advice, never to show her strength in front of anyone. The next day, the general summoned Mulan and told her that he knew her father. 
he saw in her the shadow of the Hua family sword. He told Mulan not to bind her talents. From that day on Mulan no longer hid her strength. She carried water up the mountain by herself without any difficulty and walked in the front of the group. This stunned the soldiers on the sidelines, but that was the end of her training days. The Roran nomadic tribes, with the help of a witch, attacked the dynasty and took one city after another. Even if the Mulan did not complete their training, they were called into battle. The general led the soldiers in a chant of loyalty, bravery, and truthfulness before the army set out. But Mulan hesitated when it came to shouting the truth. She felt she was worthy of loyalty and bravery, but Mulan failed to be true. Mulan went to the general's tent that day and tried to confess everything to him. But the general had high hopes for her. He even wanted to marry his daughter to Mulan. Such expectations made Mulan unable to talk anymore. She could only keep the secret to herself. On the battlefield, Mulan's army kept shooting arrows and defeated Roran's army. At that moment, a leading force turned its horses and fled. Mulan's detachment was ordered by the general to go after them. But that was Roran's plan. The arrows they fired almost wiped out Mulan's detachment of soldiers. The two remaining soldiers also fled, but Mulan didn't give up the chase and went after them on horseback. But she came to a smoky mountain road. The next moment, a witch slowly came out. The witch knew the first moment she saw her that she was a woman. She said that the lies were weakening Mulan and was corrupting Mulan's inner strength. But Mulan continued to raise her sword and slash at her regardless. The witch raised her hand and sent the sword flying. Then she hit Mulan in the heart with a dart. Mulan woke up again and saw the word true engraved on the sword. She figured it out. From this moment on, Mulan, disguised as a man, was dead. The only one who survived was Hua Mulan. She decided to become a woman again. She pulled off the bodice that had defended her from a blow. Take off her armor. Take off the hair of her head. She still let her hair flow in the wind. This time Mulan was truly herself and went back into battle. Mulan became more powerful and unbeatable. But the witch joins the fray at this moment. The witch summoned a large number of eagles and surrounded the soldiers. Everyone had to defend themselves in place. And the Roran army had already prepared a boulder cannon. Every time they hit it, there were heavy casualties. Mulan looked at the snowy mountains in the distance and had an idea. She rode her black horse around to the enemy's rear and took some helmets with her. She fires several arrows to draw the enemy's attention and make them think there is an ambush behind them. The Roran army turned their guns on Mulan. A cannon stone was fired in Mulan's direction and landed straight into the snowy mountains. This played right into Mulan's scheme because they started the avalanche. The next moment Mulan got on his horse and fled at speed. The blizzard swamped the enemy army in one fell swoop, and Mulan's army won. When the enemy army had fled, Mulan slowly emerged from the snow and fought with his long hair. Soldiers were stunned to see this. Mulan, who was with them all the time, was a woman. Mulan stood in front of the general and his comrades in her daughter's body. She went straight to the general and knelt down and confessed everything she had been hiding. Even though the general knew that Mulan had saved them, he was still furious. He thought Mulan had insulted the camp and the Hua family. The general expelled her without mercy. Such an expulsion was even more unpleasant than the death sentence for Mulan. In the sunset light, a heartbroken Mulan knelt by the stone wall, and then the witch appeared. She was a witch of courage, like Mulan, but she was also ridiculed like Mulan. So the witch could not realize her dream of becoming a warrior. The witch admired Mulan and asked her to join her side, but Mulan would never betray her country. She decisively refused the witch's offer, as if to make Mulan realize the reality. The witch told her a military intelligence. The attack planned by the Khan was just a way to attract their attention. The Khan's real troops had already invaded the imperial city to assassinate the emperor. Mulan got the news and returned to the camp to report the news at the risk of being killed by the general. She told the general that it would be too late to lead the army back to the imperial court to save the emperor. The only way is to send a small team to the imperial city. This might still be able to save the emperor, although the general could not accept the fact that Mulan was dressed as a man. But when he saw Mulan's sincere tone, he decided to believe her for once. By the time they arrived, the assassins had surrounded the palace. The general asked the others to break Mulan's back, so that Mulan could break through and rescue the emperor. But the person sitting on the dragon chair was not the emperor but the witch. The witch looked at Mulan and could not believe that Mulan had really gained the trust of the army. So she led the army to rescue him. Perhaps Mulan's perseverance impressed the witch. 
the witch turned into an eagle and flew far away. Mulan saw this and rushed after her and found the place where that emperor was being held. It turns out that an hour earlier, the sorceress disguised as the emperor's cronies and led him here so that the Khan could send his soldiers to ambush and capture the emperor. When Khan saw Mulan coming after him, he didn't hesitate to raise his bow and shoot at her. The witch deflected the sword from Mulan. Perhaps the witch saw it in Mulan her unfulfilled dream. Mulan went up to the platform alone to save the emperor. But Mulan found out after a few rounds that she was no match for the Khan. She also dropped her father's sword into the furnace by mistake. The emperor then encouraged Mulan saying she was fighting for her country and for her family. Hearing these words, she was reborn like a phoenix. Mulan jumped onto the stake and took the knife from the Khan's hand and cut the rope, making him fall to the ground. And Mulan used her inertia to grab the rope and swing to the Emperor's side and untie the rope for him. But the fallen Khan did not die. He also raised his bow and arrow and shot at the Emperor. Fortunately, the Emperor caught the arrow in time. He and Mulan made eye contact and threw the arrow into the air. Mulan used the host mastery of the sidekick to kill the Khan instantly with an arrow. Mulan saves the Emperor. Of course, he should be rewarded, but Mulan didn't want anything. She knew that she had disgraced her family and the army by joining the army in male disguise. Now she just wants to go home and thank her father for his sins. When she returned home, Mulan hugged her father, and her father didn't blame Mulan. She had always been the pride of the family. Then the Emperor also sent a sword to Mulan. The sword was engraved with the words loyalty, courage, truthfulness and filial piety. The emperor invited Mulan to take command of his army. The daughter of the Hua family was already sprouting from the branches of the tree and was about to grow gloriously. Mulan replaced her father as a man in the army. This is essentially a suppression of female identity. But Mulan later stopped being bound stopped pretending to be herself and admitted her female identity. This is a change of identity, so it's best to be yourself. 